What's up, you guys? It is Rebel of the New. I'm just getting home. As you can see, I'm about to unwind. Let me sit down in my rocking chair and not rock. <laughs> so, obviously, this is in portrait, so whatever. I'll put something on the other side of the screen. And besides that, damn, I'm rocking anyway. <laughs> besides that, I wanted to say a little something. As you can tell by the title, I feel like I gotta get something out there. I started this channel and 2016 is when I was working on my first video. I've been trying to do videos before that based on anime and, and, and games and all sorts of crap. And the videos are very poor quality. The earlier videos are still poor quality and that's how I re-uploaded them. But in 2017 is when I first published my first edited project on this anime called Another 2012. Now that show I thought was very good because of one character, Izumi Akazawa. She is the third best written character I've seen in fiction. And actually, I think at this point, she's probably the fourth. Yeah. Well, regardless, she's extremely well written. And if you know me, you know that I don't take character development lightly. When I say somebody's well written, I mean that from an objective standpoint. Grounded in total concrete numerics and, and all sorts of quantificative data. Not feely crap. You actually got to go into what makes them tick empathetically, which most people aren't able to do. The issue with that is that most fiction is not able to write a character who reflects a real life human being. Most fiction sucks at reflecting real life people because people are just too complex to write in a linear fashion. What's that mean? What that means is that people can change. People can change every second and potentially develop a new aspect of a personality. Does that make them better people than the characters you see in fiction? No. They can be just as shitty, and they can be just as shallow at certain moments in time, but they can change, right? And when you're writing something linearly, as in when you are writing out the story beats, the storyline, right, the narrative chart, the narrative plot, you can only do that once, right? Now, you can go back and change it however many times, but once you've published it, you've published it. The only other thing you can do is retcon it. But still, you can only retcon it once. You publish that retcon, right? That retroactive continuity, revision, statement, and whatever I said before, now I'm saying this now, or I'm saying this in addition to what I said before. Well, yeah, that's all well and good, but you can't have a fluid change. It's, it's just what you said as an addendum to what you had said before. It's just a static addition. Now, you might be saying, you saying that anime sucks or whatever, or you saying that you don't like anime. So why are you talking about fiction in general? Well, the entire reason I got into anime as a kid, because I started off reading books and I got a whole ton of books that I do not remember because they just take so long to get through. And by the time I'm done reading them and analyzing them, I'm tuckered out. Anime, it's, unless it's like the worst of the worst. <laughs> It's very easy. I'm sorry for the shaky. I'm literally holding the phone with my hands right now. So yes, I know it's shaky. I could be, it's just, I just literally just sat down after getting off of work. Okay. Right now, as of now, it is July 30th. And this is right after a video that I did on a schoolgirl from Hiroshima City named Reiko Watanabe. And I got to thinking, there are two reasons why I don't like anime. I, anymore, but specifically why I never did like anime all that much. Anime was always very easy to consume. Anime still is easy to consume. I'm speaking in general. Obviously, your favorite show is so deep, and it will require forever to analyze those shows, right? I mean, we all know your favorite show is Scorching Ping Pong Girls and all that stuff. So if you're talking about something like that, obviously that's an exception. But if you're talking about the shows that everybody knows is not deep at all and that's just straight up trash, like for instance, Madoka Magica, right? That's just something like if you want to analyze it, you just watch it once through and you can analyze it. You get it. Then you can have the conversation with whoever. Now, if you want to delve into a character who's particularly well written in the midst of that trash, like for example, Mami Tomore, then you do your extra research and it takes way more time. As you can tell, I haven't finished nearly analyzing her character and at this point i'm not sure if i ever will i'm definitely doing at least one more video i promise you that unless i die i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna be doing at least one more video i gotta analyze her fight with with uh, kyoko sakura 
but that's an exception, right? A, a diamond in the rough, to use an Aladdin reference. It's just like Izumi Akazawa with another 2012. The rest of that show is a bunch of terrible characters who are not just terrible because they're bad people, <laughs> if that's the case even. It's just it's the fact that they are not real written. They don't have death, or rather development. They don't change in different ways. And that applies to like basically everybody else in that show, except for one other character whose name uh, Aya Ayana. But everybody else is not even worth mentioning in terms of death. And another, I rated a 9 out of 10, just because of Izumi Akazawa. But any other show, your favorite show, the characters are even worse. Yu Haka show, most of the characters are garbage. They are written shallowly. Dragon Ball Z, the shows that everybody likes to analyze, you know, if they're taking it real seriously, like a, a Quaman or somebody. I enjoy those videos. I really do. They put effort into those videos. All that stuff is real nice and good versus battles. They're fun. But the characters are not that deep. <laughs> you know, so eventually it gets to the point to where you're looking at a, a, a cartoon. Let's just be honest. It's a cartoon that people just put out there for merchandise, for cash, you know, to, to get the nerds to buy some shit. You buy some figurines and, and get their, you know, whatever, EMS express shipments and, and crap and pay exorbitant amounts of, of money, especially because they can now because the yen is down in value because people are stock market people are stock market people <laughs> to not be too, uh, too overt with my shit talking. <laughs> but so they're plummeting down to the, the worth of the economy and the people in there got to suffer but everybody else outside hey get my action figurines a dollar is worth more so they buying all the action figurines and that's what anime appeals to right right it's, it's for kids it's for adults who like it but that's not going to pay the bills right that's, that's not going to pay those who are actually in the market who as we all know if you know anything about anime they don't make money you got to sell the merchandise, right? You got to sell the comics, you got to the video games, all that stuff, the, the media CDs and, and stuff, right? DVDs and the, the, the tapes, right? I can't even remember the names of those, the, the, the drama CDs, drama CDs. You got to sell all that crap, you know? I mean, hey, I got, I got keychains of uh, three characters, I believe. I got Sayaka Maizano, Izumi Akazawa, and uh, for Moon, I've got, uh, what's her name? Ikumi Amasawa, who was the second best written character in fiction. I think Izumi is actually still number three, but it, does, it doesn't matter. The point is that, <laughs> if, if it hasn't been clear yet, the point is that no matter what you watch, the characters do not reflect real life, right? Because that's just the nature of fiction. Now, double that with the fact that most anime is a cash grab, and you begin to see why I'm so cynical about it. To me, the best year in anime was 2016. I, at that point, I did not think anime would be that good, and I had just gotten into it like a couple years beforehand, and I had not seen anime from that time since like 2009, I believe, and I got back into anime just for Lucky Star, which I'm not ashamed to admit at all, a great show, and then I promptly fell back out of it. I'm like, what the hell is this Fate Zero crap, and, and this is nerd stuff. Steins Gate? Oh, gosh. What are these nerds looking at now? I was stupid. <laughs> but, you know, like, that. those are, again, Diamond and the Rough sort of shows. You know? They came out, like, the year of each other, like, the same year or a year apart or whatever. And then a dearth of good shows. I'm not saying there were no good shows, but a, a dearth of good shows from that point until 2016, which point you just got... Well, I'm blasted with a whole bunch of good shows. Even then, I'm sort of exaggerating. But right after 2016, and then it just continued on. You know, nothing good happening. And before 2009, the last show that I had seen that I was, like, really into was, like, Haruhi Suzumiya. You know, so, <laughs> that's like 2006, 2007, well, 2007. Just two, but you see what I'm saying? Two years even still. I've, not, I've never watched that many shows a year. And even like now, the only show that I've seen this year at all was Solo Leveling. And I was just as like a troll. I wanted to make a troll video. I knew it was going to suck because I knew the, the premise was some dork getting strong and then being overpowered. <laughs> and that's it. And there's no, no, substance to it, no substance to it whatsoever. Excuse me. And then it just somehow, by my standards anyway, blew up the video and then I made a couple of follow-ups. I didn't even want to make the third one, but it just somehow ended up 
coming out. I don't know. <laughs> and then I got requested to read Hunter or watch Hunter Hunter, and that was it. Like it, like I I do not have the stamina to keep looking at this garbage. <laughs> it's straight up garbage. It, and yes, I know there are a lot of people in real life who are shallow. I know this, and I know that a lot of the well, mainly the bad things that you see going on in the world are for simple reasons. You see all the conflicts going out all over the world, primarily in like the Middle East and, and Africa and stuff and parts of Asia. The reasons are very simple. You'll say, oh, there's so many centuries of conflict. No, no, the reasons are very simple. It's greedy people who want shit. And that's it. And yes, I know it's like the same thing in anime. So it's like, what gives? What's your criticism? My criticism is that the anime doesn't even comment on this. And it's just the most shallow themes of dealing with these shallow challenges. I gotta get stronger. I gotta believe in my friends. I gotta keep pushing. That plus ultra. It's 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 so lame. And that stuff is what gets shown to you. Right now, if I, if I wanted to dig into a comedy, I couldn't. So, of course, my phone died. For that, I apologize. But at least you get to see me now in portrait. Why don't I go out in the car for this? A, a landscape. I went out in the car to charge my dad. That's how I know I'm so used to doing this. I literally did not realize that I had uh, outlets in the freaking house until I st whatever, whatever. So let me finish this because at this point you is like, okay, what's your point? But my point is this. My point is that at this juncture, right at this stage of things in 2024, I'm at the point in my life now where if I'm going to look at, I said this last year as well, but I was talking about more so if I'm going to be criticizing something, I want to also be working on my own stuff. That's true as well. I do, I still write, right? Like I wrote uh, yesterday, I wrote several, several, I don't know. I don't know. I mostly dictate. However, with this stuff now, everything going on in the world, that last video is years away it seems even though it just was last year when i did that video now it's like the only time i'm going to talk about a show is if it has any relevance right either relevance to me or relevance to somebody else or to well if, if it's like a request okay then i might do a video if it's a request you know if you go and you ask me to look at something, then sure, I'll get, I can look at something. I can't say how much effort I'm going to put into it, right? It'd be like maybe the Hunter Hunter thing. I'm not sure, like, for me, that wasn't the most effort. Hopefully, it was still substantive. But those big, long, epic analyses, I don't really see the point in doing them if it's just for a bunch of slop. You know, I... I, the last time I looked on the front page of an anime website was, I believe, well, it was probably the time I was doing solo leveling, right before I got into solo leveling, right before I got into it, right before I watched the first episode of solo leveling. That's where I found it. And I just saw the blandest, most generic titles. I'm standing on a million lives. Uh, is it wrong to pick up these girls in the dungeon? Is it, it's like... It's like, who cares, man? Like, the titles don't don't catch you. And that's fine, right? There's a lot of shows that have great episodes. And they've gotten terrible later. Or they are just good shows. <laughs> right? Like, I'm thinking right now of something like Detective Conan. It's just a simple title. With nothing catchy at all. If you think of a show from, like, the United States. Like, Hey Arnold. Okay, what's so good about this? Just Hey Arnold. It's a great damn show, but you would never know by the title, right? Just like Detective Conan for the first 200 or so episodes, generally great. But you would never know by the title, right? I was talking about, uh, I think before the battery died, I was talking about my favorite comedy of all time, in terms of anime at least, is Urusei Yatsura, right? Those Obnoxious Aliens. That's not a really catchy title, but then again, catchy is subjective. But then you get something that everybody likes now, Spy Family or Spy X Family. And I'm like, that shit isn't funny. And I wrote this whole thing talking about why it's worse than Lucky Star in performing this same type of joke in the first episode of both shows. 
and the nerds on Chew Anime got on my ass, or whatever, or one of the nerds, I don't remember, the, the Reddit, subreddit, and they didn't have anything else to say, they was like, oh, that's your opinion, well, then that's your opinion, I'm like, okay, then shut the fuck up, because I just gave my opinion, okay, if you have nothing to add to it, then don't say it's my opinion, I know it's my opinion, damn it, that's why I said it, you know, you're supposed to be the, the discussion center, that's better than our anime, you're our true anime, right, r slash true anime, but you, you are no better than any other dweeb, and you don't understand even subjectively how humor might impact somebody in one way versus another way, and again, these shows are just being made for these low-life bottom feeders, or in a less insulting term, for people who don't really care, and they're just channel surfing or whatever, or just clicking as the next trope, I want the next trope, they like hypnotize, you know, it's like with the uh, the Junko Inoshima, the despair eyes, and she's like, ooh, except it's not that exciting, right? They're not feeling that excited. They're just, they are just in the daze. They are literally zoned out, just watching anime after anime. And some of these guys make it a contest. It's like, how many anime can you watch every uh, year? How many can you watch a season? I've seen this many. This is my, look at my Mal list, my my anime list. I got this many completed. I've dropped this many. This is, you can tell I'm so cool because look at how many shows I dropped. Okay, I'll get to your recommended eventually when I feel like, like, it's like, who the fuck cares? They all suck. And the ones that don't suck, most of them are not impactful in any meaningful way. Except to you. And you're not able to convey that to anybody else. Right? So it's like, who cares? Outside of that site, who cares? And the very small slimmer of those that are actually meaningful to a lot of different people, it still ain't nobody really talking about them like that in any deep analytical way. But it doesn't matter because those shows do not, for the most part, do not exist. I, when I, let me, let me get off topic for just one quick second. Not really off topic, but just a little bit. As my post-nasal drip starts to kick in and I need another cough drop, this damn humidity. I first saw... My first show growing up was probably anime, right, of course, was probably Sailor Moon, I want to say. It was either Sailor Moon or, or was the original Dragon Ball Z, right, one of those two. And then shortly after that, it was Pokemon, right, so we're talking about mid-90s here. I loved Sailor Moon. I didn't know any better, but I loved Sailor Moon. If I'm going to give Sailor Moon one thing, it's the fact that it starts off very strongly. It cuts all the bullshit. It briefly has Usagi or whatever, Serena introducing herself. And then, well, the the, the English version that I saw didn't do that. It did long ago, a thousand years ago, the ancient kingdom of the, or kingdom, whatever, the silver millennium, the uh, queen serenity, Lord, an era of peace. She was so benevolent and kind, you know, they do all that BS <laughs> and half lying, if you're being honest about it. Before you get to the actual show, that's what the English dub does. But again, I didn't, I didn't know any better, right? So disregarding the fact that the original Japanese show starts very strong, very fast, and very smooth, I was like, wow, this show looks so much different than than Rocco's Modern Life, <laughs> or you know, some other some other bullshit. <laughs> it's just like look, you know, cow and chicken, you know, just lazily drawn shit. Like, at that time, the show like, like that I was really getting into, probably a little bit later, was like Kablam, or whatever, for a time, that was my favorite cartoon, on, or, and then Hey Arnold, like, from America, you know, and Rugrats, of course, but, and Rugrats, yeah, and Hey Arnold, they, you know, they got their styles, they're drawing better than Kablam, but they still draw them pretty well, and Kablam's, you know, it's stylized, and sometimes it's live action, so, regardless of any of that, right, it's just a whole bunch of variety with American styles. But no, just my little mind thought at the time that Sailor Moon just was on a different level in terms of styles. I wasn't really caring much about the fact that I'm not even sure I considered the fact that it's mainly the mouth flaps moving and they're like no lips. And for the most part, the characters are still unless they are trying to purposefully the animators break up the monotony of having a still frame and have the characters pretend to do something <laughs> while everybody else, like, who's actually talking is doing the lip flapping. And, like, like it's just, and especially all the animation being reused of Sailor Moon, the dub, 
and the original and then the doves cuts and all that stuff I, I wasn't focused on any of that stuff i wasn't focused on the censorship or any of that the bad transitions any of that i was focused on the fact that it was a good looking show <laughs> to me right that's pretty like anybody who saw anime for the first time in the 90s right they thought it was good looking that's what we think today too those of us who prefer anime to American cartoons, we think it's because it looks good. That's why we like Avatar The Last Airbender so much. Before we get into the deeper parts of it, right? We think about the fact that anime looks good. That's why we accept most of this shit, even though it sucks. Because it looks good. You know, the dudes and the girls and the flair, the pyrotechnics or whatever you want to call it, right? So it, it it's not really much deeper than that. And the music was pretty good. It's not as good as Takanori Arisawa's music, but whatever. It was it was good, and it was better than what was on at the time with like Hey Arnold and stuff. You know, most shows that from like from America, they they didn't really like the music was just ambient music to like accompany. A, a specific emotional moment happening within a scene. It wasn't any, it wasn't, there weren't that many light motifs going on that sounded well. And so usually you didn't really notice the music because it wasn't playing that much, if at all, in American cartoons from the period. Or it was like the most basic shit, like Rugrats, like, ding, 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 you know, like, like, dun, 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 like, you know, the, the xylophones and shit. So I, I was intrigued by that. And I was intrigued, of course, by the action, too. There was obviously action with American cartoons as well, but not nearly as much compared to anime. Let alone the fact that anime introduced, like, real humans versus humans fighting like that. We weren't really seeing it much like that. We had the Transformers and the He-Man, you know, dun 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 dun, dun. But we didn't, like... <laughs> those shows are kind of few and far in between. The real gritty... Human versus, and, and humanoid versus humanoid, whatever you want to call it. Human versus human fighting. It, there was like Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z. Like you, you might look back on Sailor Moon now and think this thing is like for kids and the action is slow paced and, and stuff. But that's sort of what worked in the dub's favor, if we're really being honest here. Because those cuts cut out a lot of important stuff in terms of dialogue and character development. But it also cut out a lot of filler where you just wanted to get to the action and you just saw whatever action the episode offered at that moment in time. Because it got you closer to the falling action or, or rather the climax of the episode. And it was better for it in that regard. And so like when you look at things like Toonami and it's like Sailor Moon will continue in a moment. It's like all these action shots. Ah, Sailor Planet Power! Like it, it was like almost like the equivalent of Powerpuff Girls, right? It wasn't that action packed, but it was like a almost classier version of, of Powerpuff Girls. Because anybody who grew up looking at Powerpuff Girls realized that it wasn't Powerpuff Girls. It was whoever the fuck wanted to watch it. That was one of those shows that anybody watched, right? It's like Dragon Ball Z. Usually it was the guys who watched that, the boys. Sailor Moon, it was usually the girls and the, and the boys who watched the Sailor Moon and the girls who watched the Dragon Ball Z, they kept it on the down low. They didn't really tell anybody about that. Pop of girls, you just watched whatever the, the, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. We all knew. We all knew. Like, it's right there in the intro, right? It's just boom, 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 knocking people's teeth out and, and crap and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get the message. It's, it's unisex. But, <laughs> but even then, and as Sailor Moon started to go on, at least from what I noticed, and, and I didn't grow up in a safe environment, per se. Or, I, okay, I, I didn't, but I, I'm not trying to sound hard or tough or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is I didn't grow up in a fancy, spancy, upper-class, affluent area. And by, like, I would say 2000, when they had the Clover Ray dub going on, my peers... Like they, they didn't really, they weren't super into Sailor Moon compared to Dragon Ball Z because Dragon Ball Z was tr Dragon Ball Z, right? And Pokemon was in full swing too, and and Yu Gi Oh too. So like that that was the stuff that that my guys knew about if they knew about anime. 
but they respected Sailor Moon because they knew it wasn't a BS show that was like, I guess it's sort of like how people might perceive My Little Pony, which I've never seen an episode of, I'll be honest. But from what I've heard, it's one of those shows where it actually can appeal to both sexes. If we are considering stereotypes, right, because we're, we're they still exist today. Let's not act like we're past that. But especially back then, they were heavily influential in society. And so people were thinking about that stuff when they looked at shows. Like My Little Pony, too, is like, like what, at this point, 10 years ago plus? And so people were thinking this show was for girls. This show was for little girls. This show was for... But then the guys, the grown-ups who were grown-up men who were watching it, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. It was like the same thing with Sailor Moon, except on a larger scale, more people realized, because there was less competition, right? There were only a few animes out by then that were at least mainstream. People realized, both boys and girls, that Sailor Moon was a tough show. It was like an action, gritty show. And it didn't matter that they were Sailor or whatever the hell. <laughs> it really didn't. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at all that there was a bunch of teenage girls because guess what? They were ripping monsters in half <laughs> and just doing like the most heinous shit, just like in Dragon Ball, right? And to be fair, both of those shows were censored by the American media. Now, why do I get off on this tangent? Well, I'm not done with it. So you can, <laughs> you get your answer later. In 2002, I remember watching my first episode of Yu Haka Show. I stayed up late at night just because I didn't feel like going to sleep. I was still a kid. And I just, at that point in time, was, was born. You know, I had access to the internet if I wanted to, but I didn't have my own computer. So I would have had to, like, you know, pull one of those tricks, you know, you did when you were a kid, maybe. Where you tried to keep your parents' computer unlocked or whatever long enough for them to go to sleep. And then you could get on it when they were asleep. But I didn't, I didn't do that. And so all I had was, well, I had my N64, but I had, I had my, uh, I had a TV, the living room TV, because my, my personal TV didn't have cable. And so I was out in the living room with the lights off because I had school the next morning and I didn't want them to wake up in the apartment, right? It's very small. So you could easily make noise and wake them up and then get your ass to bed. <laughs> but the, the, the Yu Hakusho, man, seeing that for the first time, it's like, whoa. What is this shit called? Adult Swim? Hold up. This dude is... He's legitimately cussing. This dude, Yusuke, he is raw. Did he say bitch? <laughs> you know, I was a kid, so like cussing back then was like, it was cool, man. You know, now it's like, whatever. It's just something you say for emphasis or because you just... It's a filler word. But you didn't get that back then in shows. In, in anime in Japan, maybe you might have, but for American cartoons, not really. Not unless you were watching some, you know, like MTV shit or like, you know, adult cartoons, right? Like Beavis and Butthead or whatever the fuck. I don't know why I brought that one up. You know, let's, what's that better for? Uh, Daria. <laughs> you know, something that was meant for not children. But for me as a child, watching Yusuke do that... And then at the same time, everybody else, like the dialogue is just so good. What the hell is going on? And they're not just standing and talking like Dragon Ball. See, they're actually fighting. This dude is fighting Rando. He's getting his ass kicked, but he's 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 trying it. <laughs> he's trying it. This reminds me a bit of like Goku and Frieza. But the dialogue is better and there's more actual fighting going on. It's just, it's just more compact you know it's dense with material and the music the music if there's anything i will ever never say about yaga show is that the music is bad or lackluster and i'm talking about either the dub or the sub we all know that the english dub in yaga show is like the best english dub ever and the best voice acting ever in an anime basically we, we already know this <laughs> It doesn't matter, dub versus sub or any of that, those arguments, the Japanese versus English or whatever other language you like. We all know that the Yakusho English dub is the best job that a voice acting team has ever done in an anime. But I didn't have the, the point of reference to know this. I just know that the voicing was better than Sailor Moon and better than 
Pokemon and, and better than Dragon Ball Z and whatever and Yu-Gi-Oh and whatever other show I was watching back then. But when when you look at the music and you listen to that, that's like this. I I need the soundtrack for this. I need the actual CD. This is too good. This is too damn good. And then they're doing the the techniques, and then the 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 words are coming on the bottom of the screen. I call this the uh, it's, it's called um. What do you do? I call it Yaka Show text. I don't think I call it Yaka Show text. I think I call it uh, Evangelion battle text or something like that. Like the Evangelion text is when you have a character saying something that's usually simple, and they don't want to bother to animate it, so they just have the text of what the character's saying appear on the screen and nothing else. <laughs> or the character is thinking something and they don't want to animate it, which includes voice acting it, and so they just have the text appear on the screen and nothing else. It's usually like a, a blank background or some drabness that they try to pretend is color. They try to beautify it, but it doesn't matter because it's just static text. And it's usually overdone and kills the scene. At the worst, they do Evangelion text at the very start of a show. Literally at the start. And it's like, oh gosh, this shit is so edgy. I do not give a fuck. Evangelion did it right. But again, it's overused. With Yu Yakusho, though, I, I can only remember this being done in two shows. I, you can probably think of some more. and Let me know if you've got any more. I might even go back and look at them. But the only two shows I can think of that have the text where an attack happens, and then when the attack happens, it's just on the bottom of the screen. Not like over the screen and it's in fancy fonts and all that stuff. But just on the bottom of the screen, I can think of this being done in Yu Hakusho, and I believe uh, Armed Girls Machiavellism or something like that is what it's called. Those are the two shows where I can think of that being done. And I think Armed Girls Machiavellism does it in, in both cases. It also does it over the screen, too. But it's, it's just explicitly cool when it's just subtitled there at the bottom part of the screen. Because then, it, it, first of all, it shows more of the action. It's not like the Fate Stay Night text where it just is, well, I guess it was done before Fate Stay Night. It was done in, uh, what's that, what's that, uh, precursor to Fate Stay Night that was very terrible and I can't remember the name of it? One of the worst visual novels I read. I, I can't remember. I, who cares? But Fate Stay Night, right, is the one that's popular for having the text appear over the screen in front of the characters, right? And so the characters are relegated to the backgrounds and the events that are happening are under the, the text box, literally. Yakusho doesn't do that. Yakusho shows you all the action, and then it freezes the panel, and then <laughs> while it freezes the panel, it freezes the frame, and it shows the character in the midst of their technique. You get like the bottom. It's like, it's like you know we're cool. We're just gonna put it here just for you to see. Prism of Seven Restoration. Like it's just it's just cool, man. It's like you you see Suzaku doing all these poses or something like this. I this still when I was a kid seeing this. It was only like a year later by the time that aired. And he's doing all these poses. Y Yusuke is going through all this shit with Suzaku. Dun, 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 dun. You know, the music that's just super hype, super tense. And he's just done the shoe trick. He's tried to catch the lightning with the shoe. He's being real clever about it, hiding the energy within it, trying to trick Suzaku and Marugu. He does the spirit gun full power while Suzaku is in the air he can't dodge he's, he's using his brain he's going he's got to get the wrestle destroyed before Keiko he's seeing Keiko on the screen he's she's about to die the wrestle is gonna trigger the zombies to go after her and kill her he's, he's got to do it it's like an actual movie an actual movie that this villain is making Yusuke watch with her own girlfriend as the tragic victim to be stabbed to death on the big screen and he's just like spent himself just trying to take this dude out, and then Suzaku's like, you know, let me, let me stop playing around. The Prism of Seven. The Prism of Seven. It's like, it is like, it just shows on the bottom of the screen, I was like, oh my gosh, this shit is so fucking good. It's so good. But I first got that, that feeling, that sense, when I watched the rando fight out of nowhere. And then, of course, I don't even have to say anymore. That that ending. The homework never ends. Right? That, that... I don't even remember the name of it in, in Japanese. Uh, 
I don't know if it's like home, if it's literally homework in English, Romanized, like if they say homuraku or something like that, got or waranai. I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but it's first of all, it's the best ending in a series of extremely good endings. Yaku Show has probably the best ending themes of any show ever, ever. <laughs> I would be surprised if there's a show with better ending themes than Yaku Show. There are shows that have a better ending theme than some of you Haka shows better ending themes. But those usually it's like usually one ending theme compared to all of Yaku shows ending themes. Which just overround the other show. And homework never ends, that that's the best period. It's the pinnacle. You know? There's no contest with that. It blows everything else out the water. And so me with the lights off. Not dimmed, I, excuse me, off. My little ass just sitting there in the living room, watching this badass fight. This dude fucking swearing his, his friend has just been ripped to pieces to a bar. And Botan's begging Ginkai for help to, to save this guy as the, the <laughs> evil demon monster is like, ah, 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 how does this feel, human? Are you like this or this or this or this or this? How about this one? <laughs> like, and then he's like in the, the lake and then Guabara is speaking to him and then he, he comes out and he's like or, you know something like that I, I don't remember I think it was the first part of the, the fight before they had their their spirit gun clash Yusuke and Rando but it was just like I saw this dude just Rando was like I'm not going to say he was more, well, I, I will say it. This guy, Rando, Rando was more, to me, investing and intimidating than Frieza. And the reason why I can say that is because even though Frieza was a bigger bad in the grand scheme of things, and why scene for scene, Frieza was probably more impactful for me, and dramatic for me, and engaging for me, Looking back on it, as of when I watched that show, looking back on it, I would just forgot about Frieza and I was thinking about Rando because, well, to be honest with you, I was thinking about Rando because Frieza's fights, first of all, they're fights. He's dealing with Piccolo and Krillin and Vegeta and Gohan before Goku even comes in the picture. And then he's getting matched with Vegeta and then... <laughs> Who just got shot by Krillin. And so yeah, I know it's a, it's a boost. Right? It's the Zenkai boost. But he just this dude just got shot by Krillin and nearly killed. Shit shouldn't have hurt Vegeta. Vegeta's supposed to be super strong. This dude just got shot by Krillin. <laughs> uh, uh, give me one of those Sensu bins now, Krillin. The plan will work if I can heal my... Uh, oh, you didn't tell me you needed a Sensu bean. Sorry, Vegeta. Uh, Krillin, come back, Krillin. So this dude just got bitch by Krillin. And this is not Dragon Ball, the original. So this is this is actually embarrassing. <laughs> and, so, you know, Krillin's not that good anymore. And and so, like, what the fuck? And then he get, he fights Frieza. Not really. They just, like, have an arm lock. And then after that, he, he like, he uh, my power level is over a million. He gets into second form. And Piccolo's like, oh, man, I got a fuse of no. I can do this. I feel great. I can't. He gets, he get like, he fights the Piccolo or, or whatever. And, and, you know, Piccolo trounces him. But before that, Gohan beats his ass. Just gets mad. Like a little, like, what, what, five-year-old kid beats his, this dude's ass. One million power level second form tiring Hulk Gigantor Frieza just fucks him up. <laughs> and then he gets mad and he starts stepping on Gohan's head I'm like how petty are you like what the fuck like okay yeah you're mad I get it but just either kill the kid <laughs> I'm not even sure I should say this is YouTube but like kill the kid or or just take the L like who cares you kill him or it doesn't matter like you got beat up by a kid like the fuck it's a five year old it's like getting hit by like I don't know like Goodbye, Mr. TN. Like, Chaozu just grabs on you and you're playing like a fighting game, like Raging Blast or whatever. Chaozu just hugs your ass. Like, Goodbye, TN. Boom. Okay, yeah, Chaozu's got no health left. You're, you're gonna kill him. But you got hit by a goodbye, Mr. TN. Like, you, you can't come back from that. You're embarrassed. <laughs> it's like, you, you, you got your ass whooped by Gohan. 
little Gohan. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. <laughs> just just kill him and and forget about it. <laughs> just try to move on. And you say you're trying to rub it in, like come on, you just you just you so fucking care. What are you grinding his face in the ground for? Okay, you you proved your point, I guess. Whatever it was, you're you're a loser. Like, okay, I get it. He's a villain, but but come on, man, have some standards here. Be a cool villain. And then Krillin comes in with the destructo disc. I'll say if you go on, do 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 do. And then Priest is like, oh shit, I gotta disappear. And it, it like cuts off his tail or whatever. I'm like, like, dude, like you are, you are jobbing. <laughs> It's like, what's going on here? How are you getting just knocked flat on your face? Figuratively speaking, I, I know, well, Gohan literally, but like, what the fuck? And then Piccolo comes in and actually gives him the business, actually whoops his ass. I'm like, you fused with Nail and that was it? That's all it took to, to, to take out Frieza potentially, to kill Frieza? Uh, yes, I know it's only a second form, but come the fuck on. And like, they're that close to him? To where, like, if he was just having a bad day, they could have just killed him. And then he goes into restored form and then starts <laughs> with the finger of guns, which is actually a pretty cool attack. Especially if it weren't that ugly thing using it. But, again, go, <laughs> a little kid, go hard, just, my sick, ah, ah. And, and so you see all this shit, this dude is struggling this bad over all these episodes before Goku even comes in. You see my point? My point is that this dude, yes, I get it. He's playing around. He could easily go into his final form and just kill all these guys. Though, then again, Gohan starts beating the shit out of 100%, 120 or whatever. I think it's 100%, 100%. Like, who, who the fuck cares? He beats the shit out of 100% final form freezer. So, like, this is all in the same fight. You know, I'm mean, like, the tag teaming here and, and all that stuff. Pop goes the reason. Like, okay, yeah, you're trying to make him seem like he's, like, this this cruel dude. But he's... Finish the job, okay? Finish it up. <laughs> what are you doing here? Rando just, just came in there and and took Huabar and crushed him to pieces <laughs> after shrinking him. And then Genkai was like, okay, kid, that's enough. Just end the match. And then Rando was like, <laughs> and then he like threw the dude away. And then Yusuke was like, uh, uh, uh. okay, it's the same thing as Goku basically, but he just did it. He just got it done with. And Rando was like the playful dude is by that show's standards is what they say. You already saw me with the, uh, the spider web that he tied Yusuke around him. How about this human? Tell me how it feels. I'm dying to know. Like, th but this dude is so serious and like just getting the threat neutralized. He just does it. As soon as he transforms from his fake human form, Shorin to Rando, he destroys Kuabar. And then that's it. He would have killed him. One way or another, Kuabar isn't coming back. Like, like, Frieza let Krillin come back, let Go Gohan come back over and over and over again. <laughs> Frieza had that dude Goku's head in the water, and, and that dude was like just struggling for the past 10 minutes and had no breath at all. And somehow Frieza, like, it's just, it's so much stronger than Goku. He's just crushing down on Goku's scalp with his claw foot under the water, and Goku's like, how the fuck did Goku get out of that? But this, like, that's the thing, like, the dude plays around too much. And so you start to take him less seriously. Besides that, you get the, the random dumb shit like, I don't know, Boma and the frog and, and Ginyu and, and shit. And it's like, it's like, okay, so there's a bunch of filler going on. But like, like, what's the, what's the end result that we're aiming for here? Is Frieza gonna kill these guys? Or are they just too much for him? It's like, it's like, I guess he would say they keep coming out like cockroaches. But like, can you kill them? <laughs> right. Like, you call them cockroaches all you want. Can you kill them? Or are they tough like cockroaches? They're, they're resistant like cockroaches. Because it seems like they're giving you a lot of fucking trouble. I, I get that you're playing around, but at a certain point, there's a disconnect between your motivations and the audience's perception of that. Because of nothing else, even if we're trying to see the big picture here, which is that you're playing around, 
there's a whole bunch of filler talking going on. And it's episode after episode after episode after episode after... You get my point. And so with Rando, with Rando, I I was invested. But then again, Hiyaka Show is one of the best anime that I've ever seen. And I don't like Hiyaka Show all that much overall from a writing standpoint in terms of character development. But it is one of the best anime that I've ever seen for all the aforementioned reasons. Now, why is this an issue? Well, this is an issue because that's a low standard. Yuakuzo is a, is a, it's a 10 out of 10 anime for me. But that doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. Scorching Ping Pong Girls is a 10 out of 10 anime for me. But the 10, it's, it's unending. So it doesn't matter. It's like when you reach S class, per se. There's nothing after S class. You got E in terms of like strength. You've got, if you're ranking characters and how strong they are, you've got E, then you got your D, you got C, B, A, and then S is the unending class. And it just goes higher and higher. It's the strongest of the strong, the highest echelon. But in terms of practical, realistic, real-life enjoyment, Yu Hakusho is that high, and I've rewatched it probably more than any other, other anime ever, but it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme. It just doesn't. Because Yu Hakusho is a show where the dude, the main dude, learns a lesson which is what matters to you the most. It's my friends. He learns that uh, people who care about me. Let's just say that way. It's people who care about me. He learns that lesson in the very first episode. When Botan shows it to him. Literally shows it to him. Shows Yusuke's or let Yusuke go around and see his friends instead of taking him to hell or whatever the fuck she was going to take him to. And then he learns it there in the first episode. Then... He learns it several more times in that arc where he's trying to get his body back. Then he learns it again, like literally several more times in that arc. I'm even thinking of like Sayaka, it like reports it to Kowenma that he's starting to understand that shit. My phone fell down. Sa Sayaka, she, she reports to Kowenma that Yusuke is recognizing the worth of his friends and his girlfriend in particular, Keiko. And then they do the same lesson with the dark tournament or before that with Suzaku. I, it's about the people you care about. The, but it's time you start digging into whatever you don't think you don't think you have, and you realize you have something more. You start to put your foot to the metal and put the pedal to the. I, I don't care what she says. She says the exact same lesson, but the bite the bullet. You start bite the bullet and caring about something other than yourself. But you can't do that because you're always holding back in case it doesn't work out. It's the same exact lesson, and then Yusuke's like, "Well, what do I care about?" And then Yusuke sees all his friends and then the families and then he beats Suzaku with his life energy when Keiko is about to die. And then the same thing happens to Goro because Keiko is about to die and Kuwabara died because <laughs> Keiko wasn't enough. It had to be Kuwabara. He didn't care about Keiko enough. And it, or Botan or well, Botan wasn't going to die, let's be honest. Uh, Yukina or uh, all of Yusuke's other friends and, and shit. And then after that, <laughs> after that, it's the same thing with... Um, no, but essentially, he really, essentially, he doesn't give a fuck. So I applaud him there. He just stops giving a fuck, which is actually character regression, but it's still development. <laughs> so then after that, he, the Omi, he's like, just what the hell am I fighting for? Which is another resort I've named. It's like, what am I fighting for? That's the Yusuke versus Yomi. It's when the character asks what they're fighting for in the middle of a fight, even though they should know what they're fighting for, because they've already been fighting for it for the longest time. And then he realizes what it is, and it's like, I'm fighting for them. It's like, okay, yes, you've always been fighting for them, so you you have not grown. And so, like, it's it's the not only has he not grown, but it's the same shit. That's what I mean by one layer of development. It's the same shit the entire fucking series, which in terms of chronology, or however you pronounce that, it's been about three, four years. So, what the fuck? It's, that's why it's so lackluster. I'm sorry to say, but it's so lackluster. And what do you learn from that? You can make up a theme, okay? Because themes are subjective. You can make up whatever the hell you want to make up about what Yuakusho teaches you or can teach others. But at the end of the day, 
Yu Hakusho doesn't on its own merits do that. You extrapolate it from Yu Hakusho unwarrantedly because it didn't actually address those themes directly within the narrative itself. You inferred them from something else that it was implying, which was in the case of Yu Hakusho, I gotta believe in my friends. I gotta fight for my friends and my family. That is the most like basic instinct of basically every other human <laughs> in that show and in this world today. So what does that really tell you? That you wouldn't already know if you had some real life experience and stepped outside of your fucking basement for an hour a day. It wouldn't really tell you much because you would have stepped out your basement. But for most nerds, they think that show is deeper than it is. Now, I'm getting a little bit too offensive, right? Not really. But my point is that if you like the show, just like I said I did, it's not bad to like the show. And it's not bad to think that the themes reach you subjectively. What is bad is the fact that, objectively speaking, Yuaka Show doesn't speak to real-world issues on any sort of deep hate to say it that way, scale. I know that word is overused, but you saw me just quantify the one layer of depth that Yusuke has. Now, he has two more, but in terms of anything that d deals with what we can relate to, just one. He's very simple. And that's what I mean by shallow. And Yuaka Show is most people's favorite show. So, well, if they watch Yuaka Show, and they're in the shonen, it is most people's favorite show or among their favorite shows. I, I would just say like this. I'm not going to get bashed for talking good things about Yu Hakusho. I've got a much better chance of getting bashed for insulting it. So at the end of the day, talking shit about this show is sort of proving my point. It's one of the better, if not the best anime out there, which isn't saying much. And I know I got this teacher tone right now. It's one of the best anime, which isn't saying much. Like this real condescending tone. But I'm just being honest with myself is what it comes down to right now. Because it's, it's sort of jarring to me to think about it. But I have not truly enjoyed an anime like Yu Hakusho since 2016. With Scorching Ping Pong Girls. That was the last anime I enjoyed on that level. That was also the same year that I watched for the first time... Steins Gate and Fate Zero, and Boys Over Flowers, which are also in my top five. That, as a matter of fact, that's my entire top five right there. Anything else is it's way below Fate Zero, which is the lowest of that. It's not really close. So, I'm not trying to argue for like I said some objective metrics, but I'm not trying to argue from an objective standpoint overall why you should view my opinion as the right opinion. I'm just saying why I'm done with anime. Because, like I said, it is July 30th, right? And the anniversary of Hiroshima is coming up very quickly. You know, the days that these... Every, everything since COVID began has been a blur, right? I think we can all attest to that, hopefully. At least, hopefully, the, the worst things are blazing by us from your points of view but in that same vein history is repeating much quicker right just like i said a little bit earlier on 2024 going into well the, the, we're already into this year and we saw what happened towards the end of last year october 7th and we saw what happened right before that with the invasion of ukraine and we saw what was going on in, in multiple places in Africa. And we, we just see like just, and, and we saw like live, right? When Myanmar was invaded, you know, the government basically just decided, fuck the citizens there, right? Everybody knows about the Uyghurs in China. Everybody knows about Tibetans in, in China. We, we all know about all this stuff. And it's just been compounding and, there have been no resolutions to any of these events since their inceptions. And now in 2024, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of conflicts that I have not even named that are, are and, and burgeoning conflicts. Like, I guarantee you things are going to get worse 
on, I'm not talking about personal people's lives. Obviously, yes, that too, by proxy, right? But in terms of the global scale, things are going to get worse. Now, now knock on whatever. I don't have any wood. Knock on, knock on something that that doesn't happen, right? And try to do your best to, you know, in your circle, avoid that. But my point is, the world is not getting any better, and indeed it is getting much worse, and it is, like, factually speaking, as not as violent, but it is the most violent it's been on a global scale since World War II. Right now. <laughs> there are more conflicts in the world right now than any other year since 1945. And so, what I'm trying to say is that something like anime... If it's not actually speaking to what I can learn to be a better person to my neighbor, at least, in the midst of all this hell, I'm not really, like, I'm not in the, I'm going to be honest again, I'm not in the mood for petty escapism if it is low quality. If I'm going to, like, try and escape the real world, in other words, be a pussy, I better get something good. You know, I better get something good and get off the bat, which would likely mean that it is going to relate to real world themes and intend to from the very start. When I read Moon, that visual novel last year, late last year, I think actually uh, earlier last year, like July or whatever. No, not July. I'm saying that because it's this month, like May or something like that. Sometime May, right after I read the, that porno uh, heart work, Symphony of Destruction, which was also pretty good, surprisingly. But when I read Moon right after that, expecting it to be okay, but more or less just slightly above average, and I was blown the fuck away. I'm not trying to brag on how good that visual novel is. What I'm trying to say is that it got good, 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 good <laughs> within the first two minutes. Really, it got good, good within the first, I'd say, 30 seconds. But that was the intro FMV. And not everybody will pick up on that from the intro FMV. But it got good, good within the first two minutes. And that's a very, very non-lenient amount of time to give a work of fiction. I just don't have the time for it anymore. I'm too grounded in things that are real. You know, to waste time with things that aren't real. And if I'm ever going to talk about something that's not real, and I didn't say to, to look at things that aren't real, or to play games that aren't real, or to read books that aren't real, or whatever. Obviously, right, I'm I'm not just, I, I don't interact with nothing but real life. I do delve into fiction still. But race time is a different concept, right? I'm not going to sit there and watch a show just to talk shit about it on YouTube. If I happenstantially watch a show and it's bad, that it, like, it's so bad it deserves a, a video on YouTube, then I'll go ahead and do it. You know? If it's a question that you've asked me, which I got to get back to those questions that you've asked me on Tumblr. I really do. And you ask me to look at a show, then I'll do it. How much time I'll afford it? Yeah, probably not much. <laughs> Unless it's good. Right? I've got the uh, Let's Try to Play series. I'm trying to play the, uh, well, basically anything that's popular or that was popular. And that isn't too intensive on my computer. I played Sweet Code in 2. I played Illusion of Gaia or Gaia. I played Super Metroid. And I got some other things that I'm planning, you know, down the pipeline. They've all sucked. Super Metroid has been, it was like average. But like they all sucked in terms of my use of my time. But I sort of like, that's the whole point of the series is that when it gets to be too sucky, I drop it immediately. And I got a video out of it. You know, and in the meantime, I can talk about whatever is worth talking about i can talk about anything to some sort of in-depth degree which is more than anybody else would talk about in a regular let's play because i'm more than a regular let's play now, i haven't played those games before so i can't retroactively analyze it but i can actually look at what's going on as the narrative develops right over the course of scene progression and that's better than nothing but I'm not just going to go out and like, okay, let's think of a game to review. Just to play a game to review. No, those are like little filler videos in the midst of way bigger projects that I've got going on with my life. Not to mention the story that I'm writing. Not to mention my job. You know, it's like everything I do is to 
be a better person or to serve other people. You know, my job is in the realm of education. I was teaching and now I'm also advising. And, and that is helping people, adults and kids, right? I took another job to get a pay raise to spend the same amount of money that I was making basically before my last job and donate it. Just straight up donate it. I've donated to like these little organizations that you've never heard of because they are on the ground in the front lines and I I spend hours doing research to make sure I'm not just giving like to the, like the most big brand names where things might not even see use. You know? And that's like half of my paycheck every single time. Okay, I'm I'm saying a little bit too much. It's like a, a third of my paycheck every single time. Every single paycheck. Why? Because money is just an object and it has no bearing on one's spiritual satisfaction or spiritual standing, as a matter of fact. You know, money is just a means, another resource, just like giving your time with volunteering or spreading the word, the message, right, or whatever cause you believe in, or giving an analysis of something that you believe in, right, to furthering it a goal, which in this case is to help people. Just like hopefully my videos help you to whatever degree. If it's to understand more about a subject I'm talking about, it's that. If it's to get more active, it's that. If it's to want to pursue something that I'm talking about, it's that. If it's not getting active in your own life, you know, or in general. If it's to pursue exactly what I'm talking about, you know, it's that. If it's to do some more research, it's that. You know, if it's just like entertainment, it's that. But I want to, I want to serve an actual need rather than I'm just looking at a bunch of garbage shows just to be looking at them and so like i said if it's entertainment sure if you want me to look at a show or if i just happen to be looking at a show for whatever reason and i think that is a video is deserved then yeah i'll put one out but otherwise like i'm not the guy who i i saw one anime this year solo leveling i guess you can count hunter x hunter though i only saw about well, okay I did, I did almost finish the i, I saw 90 percent of one episode of Hunter x Hunter or whatever you call it. That's it. In solo leveling. And the only reason I finished solo leveling is because uh, Josuke told me to. <laughs> so we could do a video on it. And I didn't. I, I did not feel satisfied. <laughs> it felt like a waste of my time. That I could have been doing anything else with. I'm not trying to say I am better than thou. Or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> You know, and I don't give a shit. I care about my spirit. I care about my spiritual sanity. And I care about my, again, standing. Right? With God and being comfortable in my own skin, my own self. I can't get that while feeling this sense of running out of time. Wasting time. Wasting limited time on this earth. Watching shows that don't amount to anything. Watching cheap tropes that repeat over and over again. Watching the same still frames of animation that at this point in time is not that impressive. It really isn't. Watching action scenes like every single action scene. Whenever it gets to be too much, dissolve into this fake looking CGI. I, I just, I see the same character archetypes over and over again. See the same messages of believing in yourself, of pushing past the limit, of the, all this that you tell yourself when you try in real life and then when you're on, I don't know, your 50th push-up, you, you, real push-up, <laughs> not in the half shits, 50th real push-up, you just, you, your arms just start shaking and you can't do it anymore. If you try to go past that, you can. But it doesn't really reflect in anime. It's just, I gotta push stronger. It doesn't get into the psychology of what's going on when your body is giving out. Why that is. It just is like, I, I, I'm in pain, but I can, I can do more. If I don't do it now, then I'll never do it. It's, it's so... It's so simple. And it's so childish. And there's nothing wrong with childishness occasionally. 
but for every show, I don't feel like sifting through a bunch of crap to get to the good stuff. I don't. And I don't know what the good stuff is, but I cannot remember. I frankly cannot remember the last time I was recommended one of the good things. I just can't. Again, it is. I just did this video uh, like one or two days ago. Like it's, it is such a blur, you know, not to mention the heat. You see me sweating here. It, I just did this video one or two days ago talking about Reiko Watanabe, a 12 year old girl who was murdered by a bunch of people that 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 like the the pilot was Paul Tibbetts or whatever his name is and the, and the co-pilot was Lewis and then you had like the bomber and whatever and then you got the other people in the shit but basically Tibbetts took him there <laughs> you know <laughs> and then the, the, like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like I, the like, the point is that I'm trying to say is that a 12 year old girl was murdered in cold blood in one of the cruelest ways possible to where she was never ever found you just know that she suffered greatly before she before she went away and she did nothing to anybody and the people who murdered her did not consider her at all at all like not even conceptually they did not know she existed and they did not care and if they were thinking about people who died, they just start in like terms of numbers, like this many people would die and maybe this many people would be saved, maybe. And so what do you want me to do, Truman? OK, I'll kill uh, how many people? Maybe let's let's observe and see what happens. You got the equipment ready. And that's what they thought of her. They didn't. Right. But this was more than somebody's daughter or somebody's sister right, or somebody's classmate or friend, this, this was a real person who was burned alive and, like, melted in one of the most savage ways that humans have devised to end life. And all that remained of her was the charred bits of her lunch in her lunchbox that was you know deformed and, and crushed by the explosion that's all that remained of her her actual body or clothing or anything that was never found and that's not my issue my issue was that oh that's not a good thing obviously but my issue was that i went and i decided to look just for the hell of it let's see how far we've come as whatever Americans, the rest of the world, it doesn't matter. And let's look at the comment section of a video talking about her. It was some of the most devious shit imaginable. And I don't say that lightly. There were literally comments laughing at her. A random girl. They never knew, and who didn't know them? A random girl who literally never knew them and never had a bad thought in her body about them because they were not born yet. <laughs> and probably wouldn't have, like, like, like I said in the video, if you told her that these guys would be born and you didn't tell them what, like, you didn't tell her what they were saying about her and her death, then at the time, right, when she was still in school and not dying horribly, she would have been, okay, that's cool. That's that's awesome. Whoa. The United States and Japan are allies? That's... Huh, it probably would have felt a lot of regret about, you know, being... Having to live in the time she lives in. But besides that, wouldn't mind that, like, it's a baby being born. It's cool. But, like, they were just so, so cold to this girl. So cold to Reiko. And a lot of these guys had gamer <laughs> account names and like anime pictures and anime names. And it just goes to show that, the first of all, I'm not trying to single out the entire group of everybody who watches anime. Obviously, that's, that's too large a group to generalize with. But it goes to show that 
watching these things don't teach you any lessons. They don't teach you how to be better. Obviously, I'm not trying to say, I don't know one way or another, but I'm assuming these guys aren't trying to go out and watch Barefoot Gin or whatever. But what I'm saying is that they most likely are watching the latest shit that does not address the fundamental issue of we need to be nice to each other. We need to not torture each other. And we need to not demonize each other based on where we happen to have been born. And are living. And how we happen to have been born looking. That shouldn't be too hard. But you would find nary anything in fiction talking about that today. That very, very, very basic yet direly needed theme. You won't find it because people aren't interested in it. People are made, if you look on the front page of YouTube, if you see something bad happening in like the world, whatever, some like some terrorist attack or bombing or whatever, it has a few thousand views, but some dumbass song, millions of views. Some dumbass sports play, Millions of views. So like anything that is a distraction from the suffering of others so that your life can have immediate gratification, which is very fleeting. And so you click on the next video. Millions of views because millions of suckers like you, if you're one of those suckers. I used to be one of those suckers because if you are one of those suckers, you don't look at that stuff in the middle of trying to do better, you look at that stuff because you're afraid to try to do better. Because doing better is too hard. Because you don't want to begin to make that commitment to care about other people. Because maybe, perhaps, you know there are too many people to care about and you don't know where to begin. And you think to yourself, well, either God will sort it out or you're... you're you're lying to yourself, honestly, and you want to try to put off the fact of God because you don't you, you don't believe in God, but you don't know what will happen after life. And so you say, hey, YOLO, you only live once and then that's it. And then you don't think anything else about it, but you don't want to delve with the sadness and making other people's lives better because then you got to confront the fact that life is sad. And that's a hard fact to confront because it'll end up happening to you. You'll end up dying, too. And so you run away from. All the suffering and death and crying that you see if you're one of those few thousands of people that click. You rather be with the herd because it's just that much easier to not have to confront your beliefs in something greater than you in something greater than your own immediate satisfaction, which will, as you know, deep down, eventually end for sure. That's all that is. That's all anime is. Because the shows that actually try to handle shit that matters to us as individual people, I don't mean what we want to matter. Again, I'm not talking about the, like, the, the simple, shallow shit. I want to feel good. I'm so desensitized. I just want to unwind. I want to unplug from the world. I'm talking about the shit that we need to keep going. Each other which means our people that we care about not being murdered and knowledge, knowing new things and being able to build off of previous experiences and other people's learned experiences. Most anime doesn't tackle that shit. And the animes that do are like, there's so few and far in between that I, I could basically make my channel not about anime and still be well off. Because I would be addressing the necessary need. Those few and far in between shows that are necessary. It's just, it's just when you think about what's really important in life. I'm not saying having an outlet is not important. I'm not. But eventually, for me at least, I start to... And I think most fans, as a matter of fact. I'm not even going to beat around the bush anymore. I think most anime fans or people who watch anime... 
start to realize this at some point in their lives. I'm not saying if you don't that you're not mature or whatever, because again, you can be doing this in the middle of bettering yourself and helping to better other people's lives. But most anime watchers, regardless, that I've spoken to or read or, or heard about, <clears throat> they tend to go through this phase. And this phase amounts to their very end of anime. And then as they reach a certain point in their life, they have other priorities, other things that matter more. Whatever those priorities are, who knows? Depends on the individual. But I can say with absolute certainty that they do not have the same amount of... They do not have the same amount of, uh, let's say, enthusiasm. They just don't. They lose it. And eventually that spark will kindle briefly. You know, once again, when something particularly good comes out, or when they recommend it something with a friend and they're watching it with a friend or a rebel, a, rebel a, a relative, right? A sibling. But then it's over. And once again, you are lost at sea. And there's nothing but emptiness all around you. Eventually, you got to rescue yourself. <laughs> you know, if no one's coming for you, you got to you got to do something. You got to, I don't know, you know, put up a flare. <laughs> Get the hell out of there. You got to do something. I can't stay in the sea. I got to. I got to go back into the world, you know, and even if you want to take a vacation from the world, you need some detoxing or whatever, because the world can be a very sick and sad place. It is. It's not heaven can't stay on vacation forever you only got so many days of leave and then you got to go back into the world that's just the nature of life it's the nature of our lives and i'm ready to go back in i spoke earlier this year to a guy whose name i'm not, I'm not gonna name because i've already named it many times and like i've said in a few videos now he was talking about how the Gazans did this and that to the Israelis, and so they're getting what they deserve, basically. Now, I'm not trying to talk trash about him any more than I already have. There's no point in that, really. It does like it belabors the point. You already know what my stance on that is. But I had known a lot. I'd known a lot about Hiroshima in particular for years before now. A lot about it. There's a lot to know. And in terms of everything that I could possibly know, I probably know about maybe 5% of everything I could possibly know. Maybe 10%. 5%. Five, five so many people died. I, just, I, just, I, I, I gotta say 5%. Too many people died for me to dare to say I know more than 5%. And that's not 5% of the victims. I don't know 5% of the people who died in that attack. What I do know, though, is that I kept all of that inside. And I hinted about the nature of life and what it means to be on this earth and what it means when people die. Practically speaking, religiously speaking, Right? Because everybody has their own religion. It can be practical to you or not to somebody else. And in terms of absolutism, right, logically speaking, the nature of life and death. I've talked about that before. And I've given calls to action before. But I never really kept it too current. Occasionally I did current events and things like that, but it wasn't a mainstay on my channel. And yes, I know Hiroshima isn't current. Next year is going to be the 80th anniversary of Hiroshima. That's a while ago. 80 years is not that long ago. Which I wish people would get through their thick heads, but it's not at all. Goodness gracious, it's so freaking close. Which is probably why a lot of people still feel so torn up about it, so sad about it. Because it's, it's not ancient Roman history. 
it's still so near and dear to people. It's still so, so many people know people who died. And if they're going to keep continue to live, like if they're going to keep living, those who know the, those victims, they, they got a lot of years left. If they're like second generation, whatever, like their mother knows something about it or their, their grandmother or whatever, they got a lot of years left. You know, this is not ancient history. If they're going to believe in heaven or whatever, or they, they get to see them after they die, they got a lot of years of living left, you know, natural living anyway. And so this stuff, it still resonates with people. But there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world, too, that you can relate to that event. For instance, the same thing that I've talked about with Gaza and Palestine. I'm not going to I'm not going to make this video about that in particular, because as we all know, the further you get away from a traumatic event, the easier it is to talk about for whoever. I don't know who decides to arbitrate it that way. But in this case, YouTube. Like, I can talk about 9-11 all day. And I could still probably monetize the video. If I talk about what's going on in... Palestine, uh, <laughs> If I talk about what's going on in, in Palestine, right? Gaza and the rest bank. And, and Israel. Then... I would get demonetized if I do it too much. <laughs> demonetized. I wouldn't be able to put ad revenue on it or whatever. I wouldn't be able to promote my video, which I will probably do with this. So I, I'm not going to get too far into it, but it's the same thing. Like when you think of Hiroshima, you think of a bunch of people who had no idea. I'm not talking about just Japanese people, but people in general who had no idea what was going on. And then they died all of a sudden. Or they died slowly and painfully. And that's it. It's the same thing as with Gaza. Well, except for Gaza, is, uh, it's more slowly and painfully. But with Hiroshima, too. They knew everybody else in that entire country was being burned alive, basically, and crushed and drowned. And they were they were hoping that, well they would be spared in general but towards that that day right august 6 1945 there were rumors going around heavy rumors going around in the city that something was going to happen that week right sometime that week that, that day was a monday but by the end of that week as a matter of fact one of those uh girls who died who went to um the same school that reiko did her name was etsuko her dad told her to be very careful when she went out to do her class duties that day because there were rumors spreading that something bad was going to happen to the city on the 7th, which, as you know, is a day after the bombing. And, and Etsuko died. You know, this... Well, my my entire reasoning for comparing the two is that there are a bunch of people who did nothing wrong to anybody in particular, and they died just because they happened to be in proxy of whatever, you know, whatever. Some people say the 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 headquarters of the the general whatever it didn't exist in Hiroshima until like a couple months before it was bombed. They moved it there right after the Battle of Okinawa. Really, the main reason is that Hiroshima was one of the last cities left, and it was probably the most beautiful city in Japan, if we're being honest. There's, like, so many damn uh, rivers flowing through that city, and there's so many bridges, especially today, that was so big. And there's, like, hundreds of bridges. And even back then, there were dozens and dozens of bridges. And it was, like, the leading, along with Tokyo and, like, one other city, it was, like, the leading city in education in Japan. And so basically the entire Eastern Asia sphere. And it was one of the most progressive cities in Japan, which doesn't really mean much because Japan wasn't progressive back then. But she's, you get my point. Still isn't really. Except for like, if you care about your anime and your hentai, I guess it's progressive. But you get, you get, my, you get my point. My point is that they wanted a, a display. They wanted revenge for whatever like some people might say arizona some people might say greetings to the emperor for the the soldiers on the uss whatever it doesn't matter 
whatever they wanted their revenge for, the same thing as it was going on right now in the Middle East. And so they kill as many people as they want, and it's not enough. And they got to do it more and more and more and more spectacularly. And just end these guys' lives. End their wives' lives. Kill their little girls. Kill their little girls' baby brothers. Kill, just kill, kill everybody. Burn the pets alive. Burn the animals in the zoo alive. Burn the, um, you know, like, what's that, that hospital, the ground zero of Hiroshima? The, the Shima hospital. You know that hospital had monkeys in there, pet monkeys that were, like, to entertain the patients who all died? So, like, just incinerate every living creature, you know, in your devil fueled rage just complete and total ire and wrath towards anything alive and apparently that's supposed to take us to the next stage of enlightenment or something i guess there's a vj day and then that's world peace now i guess is what we see right now in like the most conflict fueled year ever since 1945 <laughs> it's ridiculous just like what's going on right there, right across the Atlantic Ocean. What's actually going to, ha I'm speaking from America, right? What's actually going to, and yes, I know America, the taxpayer money is going to that shit. What's actually going to happen to make Israel safer? Nothing. Nothing. Especially as you, you have that government bombing other countries too and killing random innocent people in other countries. Nothing's going to happen except the people in that country unfortunately, and people who happen to be Jewish are going to be killed, but they had nothing to do with anything, just because a few evil people with power kill people with no power. That's it. And a few evil people, with, a lot of evil people with no power who support it because they are bad people keep the sin going over and over and over again. Even though history repeats and even though bad things will continue to happen, by talking about stuff like this, you can at least try to influence people on a local scale to care more about their neighbor, right? Their children, teaching their children to, to grow up and be good, <laughs> you know, showing what that is. Because teaching, telling your children not to be, you know, mean is, is one thing. But as they grow up, they're going to see so many negative influences. So many people who tell them that person doesn't matter. Or that animal doesn't matter. Or they're okay, but you're better because blah, blah, blah. And that mindset is so, so poisonous. And if nobody speaks out against it, well, then it becomes a bystander effect and the danger continues to fester as people continue to suffer anime won't do that anime won't begin to tackle the issue and that's why i just lost interest in it not because it's boring that's only half the reason the other half that makes up the entire reason is because it is useless it is a thorough waste of my time and not only that but <laughs> by extension it's a thorough waste of other people's times because I could be helping other people and making their lives better as opposed to editing this soul leveling episode 12 is so bad because they do learn nothing over 12 episodes <laughs> because I don't know any other character's personality besides the main character over 12 episodes okay I didn't know anything about this motherfucker for 12 episodes so, okay I made a video about it sure but was it really worth it? As Ruby would say. Was it worth it? <laughs> and then that dumbass question gets asked. And then Neo slaps her silly. Because. Well I guess it's not really happened. But it should have happened. Because that question was stupid. <laughs> and it needs to be asked. Anyhow. That's like that's that's all I'm getting at. You know. You know. I just. Besides that. I feel like I have a call. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. I feel like I have a call to. I'm not saying I'm the Messiah. I'm not saying I'm Joan of Arc. You know, the, the next step down. 
and I'm going to make the, the, I'm not even saying I'm like a Tupac and I'm not going to change the world, but I'll spark the brain of the mind that is going to change the world. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that, but what I'm saying is that for me personally, again, spiritually myself, in order to be comfortable spiritually, I want to feel like I'm making a change in my own self to begin with and then extending outwards to other people. Anime for me is a negative cancer that's going to inhibit my growth spiritually. When I really think about it, these past few months since speaking to that guy have helped me to realize that this cancer pervades in society. And just because it's metastasized in me or whatever you pronounce that word, it doesn't mean that it's only in me. Because we're all a family. It doesn't matter where we live or what language we speak or how much we don't want to interact with each other. We're all a family. You know, even if you don't believe in God, we all came from the same family. We're scientifically a family. So as we interact on an increasingly global scale, well, it only makes sense why we view each other now as, or this society as a whole now as more toxic, right? more cancerous I can't escape that except for within myself but what I can do is to try and delay the inevitable and, and save as many of my cells right other other people in the same cells as me as I can that's the only way I can I can make any sort of practical change in my trying to become better I'm not just at living here. I Like I said, I've been thinking about this ever since having that conversation with that dude because that, that brought me to the realization that this guy came in debating with me about why Botan was not stronger than Tagoro and came in trolling. But more importantly, all of our conversations were about anime and that's it. Not about what's going on with the world, not all gloom and doom, but how to provide some sort of solutions or at least talk in a way that can try and turn the negativity into positivity, not eschewing the negativity and just straight up acting like it doesn't exist, acting like people aren't dying out there, but seeing if we can take something away from that to try and help those who are still alive because those who are dead, I mean, they, that guy is a Christian. So I assume he believes that there is a, a good closure to people who died, right, if they're in God. But this world is still a terrible place for a lot of people who live here. Why are we just talking about anime? Why are we just debating just random anime? Why are we talking about Revenge Classroom? And we're looking at, and me and these other nerds are looking at this one girl who was bullied and had cigarettes put on her. And she was raped. And she's just, she's like in the edgiest way, trying to, through all these schemes, get her classmates to turn against each other and all sorts of shit. And I'm thinking about this dumbass narrative. And I'm like, this lady was raped. Why does she not go to the police? And after all this clowning and joking around, this one girl, who I guess was a victim of that, I'm pretty sure she was. I don't know about the cigarettes, but of, of like sexual something. I don't know if it was molestation or rape. It's like, well, some people, they go through this stuff and they, it's just too fucking hard. They can't, they, it's too hard to open up and not everybody believes them. And blaming the victim, I'm like, okay, well, hold up, hold up, miss. You were all cracking jokes about this shit before. We were just watching a, a fucking manga and reading it and talking about how bad it was. And oh, look, look who she's torturing now. Look who she's she's getting uh, to pay for whatever happened now and for letting it happen, for letting standing by and, and watching as it happened and, and not getting involved and, and saving her. That's all well and good, but any of this shit can backfire and this girl can be beaten the fuck up or killed or raped again. And you don't care? I gave a logical explanation, and if you want to get into the 
inefficacy of the police force or whatever the fuck or her parents aren't believing her or whatever sure we can get into a discussion on that because that's based on real life and it's something that needs to be addressed but the narrative didn't bring it up so why the fuck aren't we talking about it when this is a serious issue well people need to understand that, that, that needless to say we don't talk anymore but that's just the thing with these people man most people who look at stuff like fiction, not just anime, but fiction in general, anime just happens to be, again, the lowest bar for the lowest like common denominator because it's so easy to fucking make compared to writing a novel or compared to creating a fucking film with millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of budget required. You know, anime is just some easy shit to make, which is why most of it is just cheap, let alone bad. It's just cheap. But for fiction in general... People look at this shit as a form of escapism to the point that they don't even want to acknowledge what's happened to them and are ready to reach out to other people and to try and warn them or give them advice. And maybe you might not feel comfortable doing that. Well, fine. Shut the fuck up and let me do it. You yeah, know, like my life has just been perfect. Just because I haven't said every single thing that's happened to me in my life doesn't mean I can't evangelize to others or, or try to give some practical advice to others or even hint at some. Because I'm reading a, a shitty manga or watching a shitty anime. Just like most recently, I got these couple of nerds talking shit about the fact that I'm talking about now and then here and there. And this Sarah Ringwalt girl who, who was who was raped by some other guy. And then she goes and she's taken prisoner. And so this is what they're doing to the female prisoners. And then she's going into this other room with this other guy where she's forced in there. And then the other guy is like, trying to make conversation with her and she's expecting to just have sex with him. He's going to want him to have sex with her or she's gonna, he's going to want her to have sex with him. And so she's not engaging in conversation. And so this is all he knows, right? This is the environment he grew up in. And he's like, okay, fine, whatever. You don't want to talk. Let's, let's just get it over with. And then she snaps and she bludgeons the shit out of him with uh, the same bottle of water that he was going to offer her or that he did. <laughs> a metal, huge metal canister. And I'm like, neither party is really good here, but it's much more gray than it would seem on the surface. I wouldn't say that Sarah is evil overall. I wouldn't say that guy is evil overall, but she definitely lapsed and he definitely did not try to fully comprehend every possibility with her. Like he, he didn't really see her as a, a human being that might be different than what he's used to. And so it ended up so terribly, so horrifically because of that. And then these dumb fucking nerds just look at me and say, are you trolling, dude? Dude, are you really trying to blame the victim of the motherfucker? Who, who are you counseling? Who are you offering therapy to? Who are you donating to? What organization are you donating to? What message are you trying to to, to give out on a platform to people to warn them of, of the dangers of, of uh, predation and how to spot somebody who might be being abduct, abducted or, or something like that. What, what the fuck have you done? You are a bland ass cardboard cutout geek of the same last fucking troll who in, in the same last group of nerds on the Revenge Classroom video, the same fucking bland geek who does nothing in the real world who just is phased into existence on a YouTube comment and no real life presence, no significance whatsoever in anybody's life who might need you just to talk shit on my fucking video. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be that guy that contributes to that shit. Anybody who says shit like that, I just, I give you a chance and then I, I block your ass and I don't want to see you the fuck ever again. Just stay the fuck off because shit is serious. The shit's real. And it pervades around us. Awful ways in which people demean and demoralize and degrade other people. And destroy other people. Who are no different than them. Why? Because they try to force differences. You look different. You're a different gender. You speak a different language. Just dumb as shit. That matters not one iota. To God or to science to nihilism, whatever the fuck you want to say it is. And so why not just treat each other all right? 
Yeah, but you, you shouldn't be saying, uh, you shouldn't be blaming the, the victim. I didn't blame no one. You fucking dumb dork. And that's why anime is not my topic. It's too simple. And it, it attracts a bunch of idiots. <laughs> and the more I see bad shows, the more I feel like I'm becoming one of them. Not like I'm losing my, you know, moral logic like those. But what I'm talking about is I feel the brain rot. I feel like I'm not being intellectually stimulated. I feel like if I like if I engage in something where I can I, I can actually help other people, I can actually try and find out ways to use myself, my money, my time, my body, right? To help others. Well, then I feel better, first of all, spiritually. But if you want to call that dopamine or whatever, fine. I have more energy. I feel like I, I'm learning more. I feel like I'm, I'm being challenged more and I'm going through that. More than just sitting down and watching some dumbass show. Yeah, I'm good at character analysis. I'm very good at that. But how can I actually use that? Instead of talking about the same dumb shit. Like, I could just be watching any other front page anime and giving a little 10 minute spiel and I'd be making so much money right now. You notice I've never asked for money on this channel. I don't have a, I don't have a button for it. There's so many better ways to, to spend your money to help other people than me. I don't need it. But they would be lining up to give it to me. To just talk to just <laughs> the, the most rudimentary of summaries. About the most mainstream drab shit. And it's, it's just... I don't get it. I think it's sad, honestly. Because I'm not trying to pocket watch. I'm not trying to say that people who do give that amount of money or who are patrons or whatever don't give to causes that need them or don't give to the person down the street who needs it or the person they see as they're driving who needs it. I hope they do. If you can just give that money to... However, it's by and large the majority of people who, again, not being around a bush, the majority of people who are patrons to YouTubers do not give consistently to people who need money because they're down, you know, not just down on their luck, but are about to crash out, about to die. That's why they're giving to the YouTubers in the first place, so they can have the diversion, the fast food entertainment that distracts them from the ills of the world. I have had many, since talking with that guy, and since trying to get invested in terms of motivation to say a lot of the stuff I say. Like I, I had the Yoko Moriwaki effect girl who died very horribly in Hiroshima that day. I'd known about that for not her death, but I'd known about the effect for years. I didn't have a term for it, but she stood in my mind, somebody who judges somebody through abductive reasoning you see what some in this case you see what someone has done in terms of writing in a diary she's written in a diary for her class and you try to extrapolate from that the conclusion right what you can see visually or whatever perceive you extrapolate from that why it's that way well she wrote in her diary whatever because she's radicalized and it's not true at all it's literally not true at all she <laughs> Anyway, the, the point is that I'd known about this stuff for a long time, but I'd not been comfortable with myself saying this in public. Not because I didn't want any blowback or whatever, but because I felt that if I couldn't give it my all and seem like I was 100% devoted to what I was saying and believing what I was saying, that I might not be taken as serious. I might be taken as either wishy-washy or making shit up at the very worst. And so... I would have been hurting the cause overall, right? For progressive ideals, for humanistic ideals. That's a possibility. That can happen. But if you're comfortable in yourself, what else matters? You see, because Yoko is dead. And whatever you might think of her, she doesn't care. I guarantee you she doesn't care. She would, she would care more about what I think of her then whoever the fuck said she was radicalized on Reddit. Why? Because I empathize with her and that other person is not capable. 
is not not even not capable, but does not want to have empathy, which is the first step in having a relationship with somebody. So she would she absolutely would not care about that person in, as far as what they said. But even me, right? Wouldn't care if I just betrayed or whatever. Why? Because I believe in heaven. And so that, that's that's much more than I can offer. But she's in heaven. is so much more. And she is. And so that's all I'm saying. I, it, these are things that you can't get from talking about anime. And I know I'm belaboring even more here. But talking about anime is just so easy. It's just so unchallenging. You know, I said mind-numbing before, but... And, and you know, nerds get in a tizzy over how difficult it is to talk about shows. And and they, really, they just... What it amounts to is you are talking negatively about a show they like. And they can't explain why, so they bash you. Or you're talking negatively about a character or a pairing or whatever. Some sort of... What's that shit called? A, a shipping that they like. And they don't know how to explain it, so they bash you. Or they use their middle school logic and it's weak, but they they type a lot. And everybody else likes the fact that they like that pairing or that show or that character. And so they get upvotes. And so they're spurred on. But you're smarter. <laughs> and so like deep down, again, you realize that you're wasting your time. And yes, this shit happened to me. I'm not complaining because this happened a long time ago. And I, don't enga I haven't engaged with that shit in a while. And those, again, were very, not sporadic, but sparse. Because I, I was just decreasing my commitment to other nerds. It just wasn't worth it. And the shows that it was about, it wasn't worth it, man. You know what's worth it? When I, I go to sleep and I have a dream. And I have a dream as I'm trying to think of the next topic to do in, in this case it's about the well there's a video that i mentioned in that video that i just did with uh reiko watanabe i mentioned that that video was called what to say to someone who says that hiroshima is necessary or that it had to happen or that it, it was justified or something like that what what to say to counter them this is actually in response to a youtube comment that i got with a very stupid one and i blocked that person but it took me several days to think of the points to, to levy against that dude because I had so many. And I didn't want to talk for too long. I, I ended up talking for too long anyway for several hours before I got the fuck like out of my car and went to bed like the entire day it, through midnight. But while thinking about all these things I could say, I, I got this dream. I was talking about some of the students who died who went to that same school that Reiko did, right? And it just like Yoko, it's just like everybody basically that I, I referenced that you'll be hearing in these videos if you haven't already listened to them. I talked about in particular, I talked about Tomiko Umekita. I talked about uh, Ikure Ishido. I talked about uh, Michie Kuranishi. And all these girls are like 13 years old and they died in like the most excruciating agony didn't fight anybody, didn't own any bamboo sticks, and I don't know, maybe they might have been prepared to defend their families or whatever, or someone bark comes in their home with a gun and threatens their, uh, actually, I think Michie was the youngest sister, but, but, like, otherwise, like, like, threatens their siblings or whatever, right, or their families and the family can't fight, yeah, if you like, just if, if you're in your home and someone comes and invades and, and you have no idea why, and except for they, they're trying to take over and they come in your home with guns, either you get like your fight or flight, you're going to run or you're going to try and fight to defend the people you care about. And you're, you're even if you're a kid, you know, you're going to do whatever you can. You, you can get shot up or beaten up and it doesn't matter. But this is that so evil? Is that so monstrous? Is that so the Japanese are not human? No, save that for the real demons in the army and navy or whatever the fuck. But they do that with everybody because they're racist. They literally do it with an entire island. Even so many people who are not <laughs> Japanese who died in that one bombing in particular. Let alone all the other attacks. Right? 
let alone the other bombings, let alone the other machine gun strafings and 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 all sorts of shit shellings, right? There's there is literally a cenotaph to Korean victims, thousands of them, of the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. In Hiroshima. But we had to do it because of what the Japanese were doing to the Koreans. And so I brought up that, just to get back on topic, I brought up those, and the kids are not registered because they weren't registered at the time. So all those kids just went unnamed. It's just, it's just mostly an empty cenotaph in the grand scheme of things. It's so unfortunate, to say the least. But I brought up all those kids, and I had a dream, you know, about uh, the class president of the class that Ikure Ishido was in, a girl who drowned in that bombing. And the class president, Michie, Michie Kuranishi, I didn't know much about her at all. I straight up didn't. All I knew was that she was the class president. I knew that she ran away to the evacuation center in uh, a school that was way too far away because the adults didn't give a fuck about those kids and they had them out in the open and told them to evacuate like a mile away. And somehow she made it there. I knew that she was burned black like everybody else. And I knew that she had lived for a day or rather a few hours a little over 12 hours until the morning of the next day. And then she died right before her older sister found her. I don't know her older, her older sister's name. And I don't know the name of anybody else in her family except that she had an older sister. I think she had two older sisters. And one of her older sisters found her. And that's it. That's all I know. Except for I had a dream... And I wasn't Martin Luther King, but I still took it serious. I had that dream, and the dream told me that Michie did not want to go out that day. Particularly, she didn't want to go out because of the fact that those rumors were spreading. Right? And she's a smart girl, and so she would know that it was not safe to go out the however long it took to get to wherever she got to go for a class activity that day. She it took about, say, about an hour to get there. And they had to be there about like 7 in the morning. So she woke up early. She didn't want to go out. You know, she was nervous about the rumor mill, the word-of-mouth gossip spreading throughout the city that it was not going to be safe, that the Americans were planning something very special for Hiroshima and that's why Hiroshima was spared up until then along with like two other cities they didn't know what it was but it was like there was going to be a new either an invasion or a new secret weapon like there's some something just you know Lex Lutherish. just you can't imagine how horrifying it would be and she, she was reluctant. So she just, she, she did anyway because she was the class president and she felt pressured to do it because she was the class president. But she didn't want to go out. But by that same token, Ikure Ishido, she had a fever and she was being bullied. But she, and her mom told her to stay at home because she was sick. But Ikure, she wanted to to go out to help her class out, in particular her teacher, who told her she could stop writing in her diary about the experiences she was having because she didn't, she felt too stressed and he didn't want her to keep feeling that pressure. The, the diaries are like classroom assignments and that's why the dude was saying, uh, the girl was radicalized, Yoko was radicalized because she's trying to, the, and the class is indoctrinating her, the government is. And so, you might say, okay, so what you said about uh, Michie is just a dream, and so it has no basis in reality. But the point that I'm saying is that this is an interesting challenge for me because I can explain more, but I'm not going to because then it would take up too long. I know this video has already been over an hour, probably close to two hours now. I can talk about the fact that she lived next to a military zone 
that was literally an occasional checkpoint. And so she was seeing soldiers in her neighborhood like every time she came home. And so she was worried her family would die and hated everything about that war. But she kept it in because she didn't want to discourage her classmates. I, I could say she was always very nervous because of that. that. That's why she was she was always dead serious about making sure her class was safe. The American military did not care. Just like in the Middle East now, people might collateral damage, they might say that, or it, it's unavoidable in a densely packed area. You're going to have to murder some kids. You're just going to have to. But in both of these cases, then and now, it's that dopamine rush. You know, that, that thrill, whether it's a conscious thrill or a subconscious thrill that they get from slaughtering the enemy, the enemy's children. Now, whether that's flying planes low over them and dropping napalm on those kids' faces or, or pushing a button from your office and watching the building you just know they're hiding and explode, they love erasing these kids, and Michie knows she can't help where she lives, so out of public, she's basically a nervous wreck. What's that, what's that, uh, that TV tropes thing called? The, uh, the, uh, she, she's the broken ace, right? That's what she was. That's the type of person, the kind of person who Michie was. You see, like, she, she was good at basically everything, and she put on a good face, but she really just wanted all of the fighting between Japan and America, and Japan and everywhere else, to stop. And I could go into all of that. I could I keep talking, I keep saying more, or... I could, I could even talk about the general themes from that, right? You know, from Michie's personality, from her behavior, and how other people might have been feeling or writing against the war then in, in their diaries. But it, it doesn't matter because they were all murdered. You could have been a part of the uh, resistance. Almost 200,000 people died that year in that city. So, yes, a couple people were in the resistance. I've read of a few, actually. You could be quietly listening to the BBC, you know, the British Broadcasting... And, and they, in Britain, by the way, they had no idea about that bombing that that was about to happen, right? It was top secret. So you could be secretly by your radio that morning trying to get some outside news and hoping you can learn something to take back to your meeting, or at least if something bad is coming this week so you can evacuate your family... And then all of a sudden your house explodes. And, and then you, your wife, your kids, your parents, dead. Anyone left burns to death. You're crying under the house. And that happens now as it did then. Because just to keep it real... Evil does not care what side you're on. They don't care who you're for or where your sympathies lie or if you're if you understand why they might be angry at your your society or, or anything like that or if, if we're all just human beings can't we get along. Evil evil doesn't give a shit about any of that. Evil just wants to cause pain. Sadness. And so you, you see how I'm dangling carrots, even though I said I would stop. <laughs> and by accident, I moved on from Michie. But there is a lot of inductive reasoning going on into this. Yes, I can't deduce anything unless I talk to her relatives, if they're still alive, about what she was feeling that day, if they would even remember. But through, I, it's not prayer, but I guess through the, the vision that I got as I was sleeping... I have another piece to the puzzle, and I can connect that with other evidence that I do know from all my, I hate to say expertise, even though there's so many armchair historians, again, armchair analysts, who just like to, ah, let me tell you why we had to bomb them, to just counter those fools, or at the very least spread a positive message not directly related to those fools, but that counters them anyway, just through its existence. Yes, in a way, it's expertise, because history is history. It doesn't matter. You know, just like you say, it's about to be the 80th anniversary, this year the 79th anniversary. Even though when you think of anniversary, it's usually 
something happy like Tony, Tony, Tony. It's our anniversary. Anniversary. No, it's just something tragic that happened a long time ago. Not too long ago, but a long time ago. People died. Babies died. And you... I'm not trying to be sappy, but so many people died that you do not have enough testimonies. More more people died in that attack than were wounded. More people died in that attack than were injured. Thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands more people died in that attack than were injured. And that lopsidedness should tell you all you need to know about why, if you want to understand more, about the people, not the stupid satanic event, but the people who lived before and died and after life after, or lived before and suffered and carried that with them after. The only way you can get that is to spend stupid amounts of money and to hire some investigators or whatever. Even still, you can't know for certain that what you're going to know is true <laughs> or you're going to get allowed the permission to, to talk to people or to access certain information. Or you got to pray or, or have an epiphany or dream or whatever. That's the only way. And you got to reconcile that with the knowledge you already happen to have, which for me, I would say is a lot. But again, in the grand scheme of things, it is like 5% max in terms of everybody's lives that were lost. It's just so much more powerful than watching a show. Not because of the poignancy of it or because of like the emotionality of it, but because of the fact that if you want to fully understand the gravity fully... Of every, every single person's story, or as many as, as you can, you don't just watch a show and that's it. This is something that you have to be thinking about for probably, or, or you will get an epiphany like this if you're thinking about it, like actively trying to do content with this, probably for years, if not the rest of your life. It'll happen, because that's where your spirit is. And so you can say what I said about Michi is wrong, but I can come up with some other evidence that would say that it's right. Not to mention the fact that basically no student in that school wanted to do Tatsumono Sakai. I mean, I'm sorry, wanted to do the, the classroom activity <laughs> that I've been trying not to explain, which is basically you, they want the, the kid, the adults wanted the kids, not the teachers, but like the, the uh, higher staff, namely the principal, wanted the, the teachers to oversee the kids as the kids shoveled and ripped and dug out with their bare hands and passed in a, a daisy chain rubble and debris from houses, people's houses that they were destroying in that city. So that when the Americans firebombed the city like they were doing all the other cities, the fires wouldn't spread as easy because there would be less flammable materials for the fires to eat. And so just like with the military, and that's a summation of it, so it could go deeper than that, but just like with the military hierarchy in the overseas military and whatever, where shit was really savage and demonic, you had the officers for the most part, you know, there were some good ones, I guess, just like in any group, there's, well, in a lot of groups, there's some good people, but for the most part, you had the, because I'm not, I'm not even going to pay mention to the good people because God did. You know, for the purpose of this discussion, you had evil people treating people under them like shit, like total pack mules, and just lording over them and giving orders while the pack mules did all the work, all the back-breaking physical labor, and shredding out the ass. Just shredding straight down all in their face. They needed headbands. They needed handkerchiefs. They needed... They, the uniforms were soaked. And that's how the kids were. Boys and girls. Little boys and little girls. Compared to the teachers. Now, I'm not saying the teachers were like, just straight up overseers and had the rips and, hey, get to work, girl. 
But what I'm saying is that's that's the job that they were given by the superior officers. And if they went against that, then they went against the military because the military was making the kids do this for pennies on the hour. And so like you, you see you see where the systemic rot comes and you see how it all rays down on the little kids in the end. And you see how those who killed the kids didn't care. Or I guess the one dude was like, oh God, what have I done? Or whatever the fuck. But the, it doesn't matter. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> they, they knew that there were elementary schools right there and middle schools and whatever. They didn't care. Just like right now. It's stuff to take away. And it's stuff, again, that I can't get from anime. And so that's why I don't like anime. Because I can't get anything from it. I can't learn from it. And I can't grow from it. I'm sorry if this sounded too... Not macabre or whatever the pronunciation is. But if it sounded too real life as opposed to talking about a whole bunch of anime that I don't like. I did talk about some of them and I talked about some of them that I liked. But I understand that you most likely came to me because I was talking about anime or other works of fiction. Let me tell you a couple of things. First of all, I'm never going to stop talking about fiction. Second of all, I'm probably not going to stop talking about anime overall. It'll just be less. And if you give me requests, I will definitely get to them. If you do a live with me, even though it takes me forever to edit my videos because I have a backlog, you will definitely hear my opinion on the show because I will be talking with you. That everybody else who sees the live discussion that we had will be getting it right later, but you will have had my opinion and the hopefully enlightening conversation with me. Even if I'm talking shit, it doesn't matter. I still would have given you an enlightening point of view, hopefully, or at least an in-depth one. After that, I have a huge backlog, which includes anime shows. <laughs> so those have got to be edited and they're going to be put out there. Like I said, in the community tab of YouTube, I've, I've got Final Fantasy 7, and I've got Final Fantasy 6, and I've got a Coder, Knights of the Old Republic playthrough that I gotta do, and I've got anime, <laughs> you know? So, anime's probably gonna be a little bit further back on the scale of things, but it's it's there. It's gonna happen. You know? And of course, there are good shows that will have those themes that I will just stumble into. Probably. Hopefully. I pray. You know, Boys Over Flowers, I didn't expect to be good. Steins Gate, I didn't expect to be good. Uh, Fate Zero, I didn't expect to be good. As a matter of fact, I expected those two shows to suck. And I expected Scorching Ping Pong Girls. I heard good things about it, but I didn't expect it to be super good. I expected it to be a cute girls doing cute things, whatever. The Boys Over Flowers, I literally had not heard of before. Hanayuri Dango, that show, I had never heard of it. And it's my third favorite show of all time. And it deals with the concept of rape. Which is not just a concept, but it is an unfortunate reality for men and women. Boys and girls. That happens every day. And it deals with it in an, a manner that offends nerds because it happened. Almost. <laughs> but again, a mature ray. Because a lot of nerds are not able to handle that because, well, they, they just aren't. It's not because of the nerds, but it's because they're not able to handle it. Either it happened to them or somebody they know, or they just get triggered by the, the concept as a whole. And it's no offense, but it misses the entire point of the fact that this does happen. And the fact that you do need to understand how people react to it differently so that if you speak to somebody who is reacting to it in a way that you don't like, you won't be awkward around them or insulting. Or if you see that a relationship might turn into that, you can try and forewarn against it. The things that you can take away from these situations that happen in fiction and apply them to real life to help other people. Shows like that once in a blue moon. But who knows? You know, so if you came to me for just anime and that's it, don't count me out just yet. 
However, I think that I'm on a different path now. And truth be told, I never intended to be talking about anime for the rest of this channel's existence as the primary substance from the moment I made this channel. Because like I said, I was never a huge anime watcher. And I was saying that from the very beginning. I can probably name like 30, 40 anime at the very most, uppermost limit that I've watched my entire life. I've definitely watched more, but I would not remember the names of them. So I apologize if I've disappointed you, but hopefully as I go on to the next stage, you come with me. Hopefully if you're already there, I can follow in your footsteps and keep on track with you. And hopefully if you just want to hang on the sidelines and look through the telescope and eventually I might be looking at some anime one day. I, I, or if you want to do a live with me, a video and talk to me, you know, I'm here. Either way, hopefully I stay entertaining you. And most of all, most important, hope you stay safe. I'm out.